Hey folks, this is Matt, aka Slash, and welcome back to Slash Build. Just wanted to show you something real quick here right off the bat before we continue on. Uh, I set up a little mass smelting operation over here. Uh, nothing too pretty, but very functional. And I'll step you through it a little bit. This is using the new 1.5 hoppers. And uh, it's not a original idea. I, I've seen other people do this. BWO, Generic D have uh, worked on things such as this. But the uh, basic principle is you set up your furnaces and the design you could extend further off to the one side if you so desired. And anything you feed into a furnace from the top goes into this top slot. So here I'm feeding in netherrack. Uh, anything you feed into a side, like these two hoppers are connected, goes into the fuel slot at the bottom. And then if you hook up hoppers underneath, they will receive the output from the furnace. I don't know if we'll see. There it goes. One flash by. And that's the basic premise here. And then up here, I've set up a chest for netherrack. And now this is a trapped chest so that it will sit next to it. But I have a chest up here for coal. The only downside to having to use a trap chest is while it's open, this hopper won't send items. But that's not too much of a concern. So here's how it works. We'll do the fuel first. You drop your fuel in here. This hopper is directly underneath, so it receives fuel. Right now it's all filled up, but any fuel that it gets, that it, when it has room, it will then feed on to this hopper. You see how it's connected right there into here? And then that feeds into this hopper and that feeds into this hopper. Now, because these two hoppers underneath are underneath these inventories, they act just like the other this hopper here in that the items will go down from this inventory into this inventory. And then since this is hooked into the side of a furnace, it goes into the fuel slot. So chest to this hopper, to this hopper, to this hopper, to this hopper, and then down to here. And then anything that hangs, once this one's full and this one's full, then this one will start backing up and it'll fill this one. Until this one is full, then this backs up, etc. And so it'll just keep pulling coal in, keeping this at 64, as long as it has stuff to smelt. And then the top one is a lot simpler. It's just two facing downward right underneath the chest. And then it just pulls from there into there, and then down to there. Once something is completed, it goes down into this hopper, which is connected to this hopper, which is connected into this chest. So the results will come down here. This way, whenever I'm tunneling in the nether, I could just drop off a bunch of the netherrack when I get back in here, and it will smelt. <clears throat> wow, excuse me. It will smelt as long as this chunk is loaded. It is definitely allergy season. I am feeling it. I've got a bit of a headache. A little bit of a stuffy nose. Not too bad. Just enough to make me a little bit miserable. But... That comes with the territory, I guess. I never had allergies. Sorry, I keep stopping to sip because my mouth is getting dry as well. But uh, I never had allergies as a kid. Uh, it's only in my adult life that I've started experiencing allergies. So I'm not, I don't often remember in allergy season to take my allergy meds, you know, like the Claritin in the morning. Uh, if I do that, if I take like a 24-hour allergy medication, then I don't have any problems during the day. I'm just, I'm not used to it, so I haven't gotten to the habit of it. All right. We're back here at our dragon egg shrine. As you can see, I've done some work off camera. I finished off the floor plan. Now, on this side, I'll pillar up here in a little bit, but on this side, I've got it rounded. On the other side, I have it squared off. Let's take a quick look at that. Let me know what you think is the better option for the look of the place. If you think it looks good, 
Let's go right in the center. We make it looks good with the squared off look. Like so. Or if you think a rounded, like if the wall were to come around here instead and be more of a round shape, if that would work better. I'm not going to tell you my preference. I want to hear what you have to say. And then uh, we'll see if it jives with me or not. So the next thing we're going to look at, actually, I need some supplies to be able to do this. So let's get down here to our supply chest. We're going to try and finish up the wiring. I've been using, I think, white, black, and blue. Uh, we'll take along a bunch of this redstone as blocks. This one here as well. Very good. All of that. A bunch of these guys. I'm going to need more than that. I'm using the wool to denote where the wires go, and then these blocks here to host uh, torches, which I did not pick up. Torches, torches, torches. I don't have any torches. Let's make torches out of these at least. And we're going to need some more. Do -do -do. We'll start there and we'll see how far that gets us. It's not going to get us all the way. So when I was looking at wiring this up, I started with the simplest one, which is this one right here in the middle. So let's go ahead and start placing some blocks. Now, if we do this and we place a torch up there, which you can do just by clicking against that face, so it'll find that block to attach to. It lights up that uh, lamp and the two adjacent to it. So we only really need to go about every other one. We could do every third, but I'm doing every other one. So if I back this up here, and then I can knock out every other one. I didn't need that one on the end. As it turns out. And some blocks underneath. Now I'll show you what why the blocks underneath in a second. So there, with those torches directly underneath, we've got all of these lights lit up. Now, what I want to do is I actually want the lights to turn on when I send the signal. Right now, there's an absence of signal because I haven't even hooked up a wire yet. So we're going to invert this by putting a torch underneath all of them. So torch powers this block, depowers this torch, turns the lights off. Now, we have an arrangement where if I run a line of power to these blocks... These torches will turn off, and the torches above will turn back on, and we get the desired effect. So let me get some of this redstone going. Actually, I don't need more than one block's worth. Because I'm only going to put... Actually, I don't know if I'm going to use any. I don't remember exactly how I have it set up elsewhere. I think I just did... Okay, I do have one line of redstone here. Now, I can't just go like this... Because this dust can't pick up on the fact that this block is powered. But, if you use a repeater, a repeater kind of draws the power out of the previous block. So, that's drawing power out of this and continuing the circuit along, repeating the signal. So, I could just throw a couple of those down in the gaps. And now we've got the desired effect. So now when I turn this off, and then on. And what's nice about the repeaters is it gives it that little flicker effect, which I really like. And we can adjust that by just right-clicking on the repeaters and adjusting the delays if we want to later. Now I've done the other three straightaways, so nothing new to see there, but it's just repeat the pattern. Next, we will take a look at doing these diagonal ones. Now, I started from here. Now, because they're diagonal, I have to power them in groups of two because the power here would not carry across the diagonal to there. 
So let's go like that. Knock these out. Same principle. And in fact, if you watched any of my SMP video uh, where I was working on an ice cube tray on the server. Sorry, I needed to fix the torch. Um, you'll recognize this as the knight's move formation that we had used in the ice cube tray pistons. And this is the exact same concept that we're going to use here. Now let me put down... What did I actually use? I actually used purple. Let me be consistent. And then I need black for the other one. So it wasn't blue, it was purple. I should have figured that out from the fact that I had one full stack of blue there. I blame allergies. They're the scapegoat for everything this time of year. All right, so the way that we will set this up is to just run lines like this. I think I accidentally got some dirt out there. I did. All right. So, wool to denote where I'm going to run the lines. All right. Repeaters into the blocks. Dust alongside the blocks and then I think I did it this way we'll go double check here in a second lever for the power all right now we need eight more torches so let's go get some more wood under the chest and make ourselves some torches uh, two three four Ba -doom. Uh, is that going to be enough? No. One more? Close enough. All right. Now we're cooking. Let's get back over here. Torches basically the same way as we did before. One set of torches to turn the lights on. And then another set of torches to invert the signal so that they're off. And then flick the switch. Very good. Now, in the final design, these switches won't be there. Okay, I was just putting them next, right next to the repeater. Whoa, stuck keys again. Doing it that way. Donk. Now, like I said, in the final design, we're not going to have these levers here. These are just to test to make sure the input actually does what we want it to do. Now, let's move on to the trickiest one, which is the diagonal. Because you can't run anything on a true diagonal, and redstone is no exception. So unfortunately, I have to do this for every single block. Uh, like so. Oops. Eh. Knock these out. Oops. Dang it! There. All right. Now we do the same thing here with the torches. With the torches. Purple wool does not have any use in the redstone department. Gimme. So, place the torch turns on, turns off again, because then it's getting power from there. Ah! Let's go to sleep. <laughs> Boogeymen are coming out. Run! Got... A uh, little house that I've been working on off camera over there. About 50-60% complete, maybe. And I uh, migrated a couple of villagers over. You can see them hanging out in the incomplete house. Like fools. There's no roof on that house, guys. That's not going to save you. 
But the magic fact that when I, and only I, sleep in a bed in this world, all of a sudden it advances to day. None of you guys have to sleep. It just magically switches. And that must be normal for a village NBC villager, you know, character. Like, if they had actual intelligence, they would just be like, well, sometimes there's a full night, and sometimes the night just ends abruptly and goes back to daytime without any rhyme or reason. That's because the player is sleeping. All right, now how do I have this set up? I'm doing them on the left-hand side. Just referencing my wiring for the other thing. Because this is very complicated. Let's get the black wool on the bar. So to make this work, I couldn't just run wires right into the sides of these like I wanted to because they come too close to this. And then when I put the other one on this side, very, very close. So I have to run the wiring one level underneath so that they don't interfere. And I don't know if this is the best way to do it, but this is the way I ended up going with. <laughs> uh, dust here, when powered, at least by a repeater, will cause the adjacent blocks to receive power. I don't know if that's true all the time. Yeah, see, that's going straight in. I would have to some I have to power the block so that the dust gets powered and it powers both of these. And then on the side, we dig in and we run wiring very similar to what we did for the uh the horseshoe pattern or not the horseshoe pattern, the horse move, the knight move pattern. Which is to do this. Now let's dig this down another layer. Because our wiring is actually going to go on that layer. Uh, let's do that. Not, <laughs> not that. That will do. All right. So we'll go like this to get the foundation laid. And actually, I don't need anything there, do I? Because I don't have a black wool right there, so... Never mind, let's pick this back up. I've done this, uh, this particular wiring set twice before, and it still confuses me. Alright, now we need repeaters in. Now, in order to get the cascade effect, I'm actually setting these repeaters to increasing delays like so that's not necessary for the powering of the project this particular line but uh for the aesthetic i've done it this way and one final block here and test very good on and off excellent all right, uh, let's take a quick break. I'm going to finish up the wiring here, and uh, then we'll move on to something else. All right, and we are back. I'm going to pop on a... Come on, let me in there. Whoa. Uh, mine cards seem to be glitching on a little bit for me in 151. I'm sitting higher than I should be. Like, right now I'm glitching... Let me see if I can have five. Whoa! <laughs> wow, that's trippy. Oh, did it? Hey, it just switched me into F uh, first person mode automatically. I did not press F5 again. That is wild. But uh, what I was trying to show you is um, I'm glitching into the cobblestone half slabs. There, you can see one there. I'm glitching into them, whereas I should be riding right underneath them. I'm not sure why that is. When I get towards the end of the line, because it's been consistent for me, when I get towards the end of the line, it's going to drop me back down underneath. And I don't understand why this is happening. But uh, anyway, the reason we're on this line is because I want to... There we go. Now I'm underneath. I was going to show you what I've got so far 
in my latest little project out this way. Let me pop this in here just so I don't lose it. So before, originally, the way this room was, well, first of all, this glowstone was down a block, which was causing these two ice blocks to melt. So I moved them up so that, that doesn't happen. And then this portal was the end of the room. There was nothing beyond that, just solid netherrack. I've opened it up a little bit. That, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with. I might just close that off completely. And I've created a spiral staircase that the idea is to bring that up to, I think it's Y is 116, sitting at 60 right now, is the foot level of the railroad tracks that are in, in more or less in the ceiling of the nether. So I've been making this grand spiral staircase to uh, get up to that level. And it has taken me a while. I've actually repaired my pick once, I think maybe twice, since I started this project. And you can see it's already down under half again. Just mining out massive, massive, massive amounts of netherrack to hollow this out. It took me a little while to come up with the strategy uh, for this staircase because it's a little tricky getting it to spiral up in multiple, you know, multiple, multiple width like this. I didn't want to do just like, here's a landing and then some steps and then a landing on the corner and some steps. I wanted it to spiral the entire way, which requires doing some of this kind of wrapping that you see here where it starts there, comes across and then cuts back. Uh, and that seems to be working out for me. The strategy that I've been following is to have an inner spire, I guess you would call it, to the staircase be a fixed width. Now this one is a little weird. Here it is seven wide, but up here it's actually going to be eight wide. And it's eight wide down here as well. You might not be able to tell very easily, but here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight there. Whereas I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven there. And the reason for this is because of the stupid nether portals being even number width. I couldn't make it odd all the way around because then it wouldn't really fit the... There's my stuck keys again. I'm going to have to take another look at updating LWGL. It did not work well for me the last time I did it in Linux, but maybe I'll have better luck next time. Uh, so because of the even width portal, I had to go eight. And then in order to achieve something vaguely like a circle, I wanted a center point. So I used seven on the other side. And it's working out. It's a, it's a bit of an oval. Uh, but you can't really tell too much when you're actually on it. I'll show you. Here, we've got uh, a space that's seven blocks wide. And then two, one, one, two. And then two again, and then eight. So here, after the wide section, it's two blocks wide, one, one. And then two blocks wide again, but then we go two more and bow it out a little bit further for the eight wide section that's here. And then two, two, one, one, two, seven, two, etc., all the way around. And uh, I'm happy with the way that's turned out. Now, obviously, I'm not going to keep this uh, all plain looking like this. Right now, I'm just setting out the the basic look for it. Basic shape, I guess I should say. Um, but uh, once that's established, I want to do some cool things, maybe with some iron bars for a little contrast, some flowing lava behind for lighting, maybe outside and inside, uh, something along those lines. So let's see, this is the seven. I need to go two in here. So the way that... I was figuring this out as I was going. Let me get a few half slabs going in here as well. Think. Think. 
The way that I was figuring this out as I was going was to do the outer circle first as far as I could. You know, I'm doing it in sections, but go outer circle. Let me get a little bit more light in here. I don't know how well you guys can actually see on YouTube. I can see fine on my computer, but for some reason on YouTube, this seems to be a lot uh, darker. Oop, get my pickaxe. There we go. So let's get this next section of outer wall done so I can show you what I mean. So then we come, so this is wide space 211, so I need two more here because this is the, the eight. And it should, oh no, wait. Oh no, that's fine, yeah. Because it should, the wide space should match up with this wall here. And it's going to. Is it? Hold on a second. No, it doesn't seem to be. What did I do wrong here? One, one. Oh, wait. No, that's that should be right. Two. And then two. Huh, wait a second. Did I mess up down here? What is a fine how do you do? See, that matches up. I don't think this one does, does it? No, it doesn't. Shoot. I messed this up. All right, well, now you get to see me fix the mistake. So this is supposed to match up. That wall is supposed to be just as wide from the corner to the corner as it curves back inward on each side, that section is supposed to be as wide as this over here. And I cut it one short, so I need to cut it out further, like so. And then continue that around like that. And then this one has to come out. Like this. Oops. Let me get nether rack here. We'll go up, up, but up, up. Uh, yeah. I've been trying to save materials as much as I can, so I'll put a half slab there because then it's covered up by that half slab. Can't even tell that that's not a full block right there. And it saves on space. Same thing here. Upside down slab. Done. All right. So now, uh, this is supposed to be two and two. So this needs to go in. All of these need to go in. So what it boils down to. Let me do that real quick and uh, rejoin you. All right. That fixes that part. Now it goes two, two, eight, two, two, one, one, two, seven. And all of this is off by one now. <laughs> uh, it's a good thing that I caught this mistake when I did, rather than spiraling all the way up to the top to realize, wait a second, something's not right. So far, I've only made it to about 94. Uh, so I've got quick mental math. Uh, 22 more blocks I think I have to go up to finish this off so I'm gonna be doing the vast majority of this off camera uh, because it is a lot of this <laughs> just a lot of breaking of blocks usually nether rack when I don't mess up um, and then placing of blocks but I'll just show you real quick on what I have actually here so center column, as I go up, like I said, eight by seven, that's easy enough to keep in mind as I build this up. And then on each area, so let's start here, right? We just keep stepping up like these are normal steps, just looking at this row here. And then each one I place, I just keep moving over until I hit the wall. Or in this case, since this came over, right this started to wrap around 
So started when I came around the corner, started the next one here, brought it all the way to the wall, started this one here, brought it over, and then wrapped it around following this pattern, and then continue that. So this one here, wrap it around, next one up, wrap it around, and eventually it comes over and it hits a straightaway again, and then you have a couple of straightaways, and then you start on the next edge over on the center column and then you start wrapping it around again and as long as you just keep following that pattern and you don't mess up along the way <laughs> uh, it will turn out pretty well I think I think it's a cool design there are a couple of other ways that you could do a staircase like this uh, but I think that this one works for my purposes in this place well, that's going to do it for today. I've got a lot more tunneling to do in this area. Uh, we're already running a little bit longer than a typical slash build runs. So thank you guys very much for watching. And we will see you in the next episode.